Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. From January 22nd, 2021 through February 5th, 2021, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a Caltime Draft Booster box. Also, there is another way to enter where no purchase is necessary. See the link in the description for full details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Now, you might remember last week's video, I said it was a record-breaking week in the secondary market. Cards were spiking all over the place. This week, things got ramped up even more. Now, you're going to notice a lot of reserve list card spiking like we saw last week as we go through the video. Also, remember, Keltime just came out, and even though we're not talking about Keltime prices yet because they haven't stabilized, we will see existing cards moving because of their interactions with cards from Keltime, particularly in Commander. And there's just so much more going on. As a matter of fact, in this week's video, you're not going to see a card moving up or down less than $5. That was the threshold I had to make this week. With that being said, just a quick reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. If you choose to, you can pick up some Keltime products there or a number of other things that you'll find on the website. And remember to use that Heroes promo code because, for example, if you use it on a Keltime Collector Booster Box, it will come down to $190.80. Of course, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. There's really nothing going on in Standard this week, so we're going to skip right to Pioneer and the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. I only have one card in this section, and it's actually an older version of a Pioneer Legal card. And that is Shivan Dragon from Revised. It goes up $13 this week to $41.49. So sure, this doesn't see a whole lot of Pioneer play. It does see a little Commander play. But the story is the same as last week. Cards from the Revised set are still very, very hot. A lot of players got priced out of Alpha, Beta, and now Unlimited. And they're moving on to Revised, even though the print run was much higher for that set. These cards are getting a little bit hard to find in good condition, especially online at any given time. And that takes us to the Modern Legal Spotlight, where we look at Modern Legal cards that are moving the most this week. We'll begin with Coat of Arms, the copy from 10th edition. This card was moving up last week as well. Even though the other copies have been relatively stable, this particular one has dried up in the marketplace. Now, it does stand a reason some players might be interested in picking a copy of this up, because Keldheim has a lot of tribal support for various tribes. This goes up 518 this week to 1899. Next, we have Kozilek Butcher of Truth, the copy from Ultimate Masters. It goes up 927 this week to 9919. Now, this does see modern play many times in Tron builds and much more. Occasionally, this is in Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post 2, but the main reason it's been moving the way it has been moving recently truly is Commander. This is in Kozilek the Great Distortion, which is popular and much more there. And there are some Keltime cards that could be pushing this as well. Savella Ice Shaper is one. I've seen this in some of the early deck builds around that card. Also, this can be found sometimes now in Asika God of the Tree slash the Prismatic Bridge builds. Remember, if this comes into play with the Prismatic Bridge, you don't get the cast trigger, but it's still a very menacing creature to have on the battlefield. Jin Gitaxius Core Augur, the copy from Iconic Masters, goes up 1133 to 3947. Very good commander card in a number of different builds. This could also be a nice target in those Asika God of the Tree slash the Prismatic Bridge builds. Another big Eldrazi here with Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. Those Ultimate Masters copies have been hot recently, and they finally stabilized, but these other two copies are trying to catch up. Rise of the Eldrazi goes up 950 to 6750 this week. Modern Masters 2015 up 1224 to 6547. So this is mostly a commander card nowadays, and it really does fit into all the same places that Kozilek -like Butcher of Truth does. Next we have Slivered Legion from Future Sight going up 1389 this week to 11994. This card sat around the $100 mark for a really long time now, starting to spike again. We'll have to see if it can keep its value this time or if it will start to retract again within a week or two. But as you know, Silver Decks are always popular in Commander, and Caltime did bring us new creatures with a changeling ability, which could get people thinking about Slivers again. We're going to close this section out with a couple cards from Revise that are modern legal. This is Royal Assassin going up 1488 to 2432. Now this does see some Commander play in Queen Marchesa, for example, and other places. But again, this is moving mostly because it is a card from Revise. And the second one, Wrath of God from Revised, jumps up $26.88 to $50. Now, even though this again is moving because it is from Revised, it is a highly played Commander board sweep. 
All right, fasten your seatbelts. Here's where things are really going to start to take off. Welcome to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we look at cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. And like the rest of the video, you're not going to see anything moving less than $5 here. But additionally, when it comes to the big sets, Unlimited, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, and Legends, we're not going to look at anything moving less than $100 and at least 10%. That's how wild the market is right now. So if you are interested in any particular card that maybe is going up in value this week that's not in the video, I would encourage you to do your homework, check eBay, see what they're actually selling for before you make a purchase. There's just so much happening right now. Let's begin with a card that is not on the reserve list, Maze of Ith. It goes up $590 this week to $36.97, and this was reprinted recently in Double Masters. This original copy, though, still going up in value. You'll find this in Legacy Lands and more. It's also a very good commander card in a lot of different decks. Here's the first of many, as you can see from that tag in the upper right-hand corner. This is on the reserve list. Rofello Slanowar Emissary goes up 606 this week to 5758. Now, this is an elf, and sure, Keltheim is pushing that tribe quite a bit, but this is banned in Commander, so I don't really think Keltheim's having a big impact on the price. I think this is moving more because of simple supply and demand. Maybe some people are speculating at some point it could become unbanned in Commander. Here's another card banned in Commander. Yogmoth's Bargain goes up 623 this week to 2947. Mana Crypt, the copy from Double Masters, trying to find its price point. It goes up 724 to 110.86. This was also reprinted not too long ago in Mystery Boosters. This is a great vintage and great commander card. Helm of Obedience, up 1273 this week to 59.99. And this does see play in Legacy as well as Vintage to some degree. And of course, this is a reserve list card, but take note of something in particular here. This is from Alliances. You can find a lot of cheaper reserve list cards there, and there are people picking up on that fact in the marketplace. Squandered Resources of 1413 to 4410, sometimes in Legacy Aloran sideboards. Also, the Seas Commander playing a number of different decks, including the Gitrog Monster. Academy Rector up 2005 to 10324 this week, another card you might find in Legacy Aloran. This also sees a good amount of Commander play. Null Rod, another card you're familiar with if you play Legacy and or Vintage. This goes up 2780 this week to 9999. City of Traders. Now this is a highly played legacy card in a lot of different builds. See some vintage play too. It goes up 2799 this week to 29899. Necropotence. This is a solid vintage and a solid commander card. This also got a Telerian Community College mention this week as well, which could have brought some more attention to it. Fifth edition goes up 2335 this week to 5299. Ice Age up 2406 to 6309. Mox Diamond from Stronghold. This goes up 4170 this week to 699.95. This is in Legacy Lands and more in that format. Sees Commander play too. Even getting a little additional play in that format around a new Keltheim card that's Bergy God of Storytelling slash Harnfell Horn of Bounty. Another card that's good in Vintage as well as Commander. This is Yogmoth's Whale going up 4455 to 43750. Aluren. We've been talking about this a lot. Obviously, does see play in those Aluren Legacy decks. Also sees a good amount of commander play in Chulain Teller of Tales and more. This goes up 4777 this week to 129. Another card that is banned in commander, but it does get play in vintage. It is Talarian Academy. It goes up 6373 to 199.99. Intuition sees a little legacy play and a good amount of commander play. This goes up 6519 this week to 239.99. Here's Bayou from Revised. You're going to see a lot of dual lands on the list today, too. This goes up 6670 this week to 549.99. Here's another one, Savannah from Revised, up 7348 to 354.97. Grim Monolith. This goes up 9752 to $400.01. However, I can't really find any copies selling for around $400, even at high grade currently. The highest I could find are copies approaching $300. So there could be a little manipulation here. Just wanted to point that out. Now, when it comes to gameplay, this does see play in Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post. It's also a great commander card and combo enabler. And this is another card showing up in early builds of Bergy God of Storytelling slash Harnfell Horn of Bounty. Additionally, this got a mention in the Command Zone podcast this week for a card you might want to throw into a Turgrid God of Fright slash Turgrid's Lantern build. That could have brought a little more attention to it as well. Guardian Beast, that goes up 10730 to 783.92. Now we're starting to get into the big movers, and we're seeing something again this week, which we have been seeing over the last few weeks. A lot of cards are getting their price point moved on those big websites because there's just higher grade copies out there for sale, and in many cases being sold. 
There's also a lot of record-breaking sales going on. We saw some last week. We're seeing more this week. However, in a few cases, there is some market manipulation happening as well. For the rest of this section, if there is a card that looks like it's maybe being manipulated, I will point that out. Another dual land with Plateau, unlimited up 102.87 to 535. The revised copy goes up 111.11 to 377.50. Scrubland from revised up 115.85 to 359.97. Sherazad, pretty much illegal everywhere, but still going up 146.30 to 494.50 this week. Mana Vault, the revised copy goes up 6.32 to 59 dollars. The unlimited copy up 146.50 to 562.50. Great card for Commander as well as Vintage. Taiga, another dual land here from revised. It goes up 147.02 to 458.10. Old Man of the Sea goes up 153.15 to 300 dollars. Badlands, another revised card, goes up 166 to 519.99. Gaia's Cradle in Legacy Elves and More also sees Vintage and Commander play. It goes up 221 to $1,149.99. Gilded Drake, you'll find this a lot of times in Legacy Esper Vile. Also a very solid Commander card in a number of different builds. But maybe there's a little manipulation here. If you look at the numbers, it appears this is going up 222.31 to 570. However, I can't find high grade copies selling for more than 375 currently. That's still a big jump though. Wheel of Fortune from Unlimited. In theory, going up 2316 to 2650 this week. In reality, I just can't find copies moving for that. I did see a slab graded 10 copy of the card go for about $1,900. So that kind of gives you an idea of where the card should be. Tropical Island, first off, the revised copy in theory going up 32849 to 1165 In reality, it looks like high-grade copies are approaching about $800 when you look at real-world sales. Unlimited goes up 405 this week to $1,474.99. Underground Sea from Revised, it goes up 409.50 to $1,169.99. Tundra Revised goes up 125.01 to $599.99. Unlimited up 450.01 to $1,649.97. Bizarre Baghdad, a little market manipulation here. In theory, if you look at your big websites, this looks like it's going up 547.56 to $4,717.50. In reality, high grade slab copies are selling for around 4000 Not quite 4700 though. Gauntlet of Might from Unlimited goes up 554.52 to $1,350, or does it? In reality, high grade copies are selling for closer to $600 right now. Library of Alexandria goes up $786.49 this week to $2,549.99. Serendib Efreet from Arabian Nights, the original copy, it goes up in theory $1,162.42 to $1,799. This is close. I have seen high grade copies selling for around $1,300. This does just go to show you, though, that a lot of collectors are interested in old cards in good condition sometimes when they're not on the reserve list. This card's been reprinted a number of times. You can get real cheap copies if you just want to play with it. Volcanic Island, the revised copy goes up 91.58 to 899.99. Unlimited is seeing a little market manipulation. In theory, again, if you look at your big websites, it looks like it's moving up 1,312.01 to 2,699.99. High grade copies are selling for around $1,200 currently. Mox Ruby from Unlimited, another card that is seeing some manipulation. In theory, going up 3,528.73 to 6,724.72. In reality, again, you can find high grade copies for around $4,500. And one last card for this section the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale. This goes up 3,865.36 to $6,616. Uh, not really. High grade copies sell for around $4,000. Still, though, all these cards that are being manipulated up a little higher. They are actually going up in value too, just not quite as high as they seem to be going. And some of that could just be due to the fact that as people see the prices climb, they're increasing their asking prices, attempting to break a record. And that's going to take us to the Commander Spotlight. Again, you're going to see a lot of reserve list cards in this section this week. And there's a lot of cards you're going to see here that sure they do see maybe a little Commander play here or there, but they're really moving because they are reserve list cards. If that's the case, I'm not going to keep repeating that. I just won't say anything about the card if I don't really have anything additional to say. But just keep that in mind that that's going on. It's also good to know why some of these reserve list cards are spiking. There are different reasons for different cards. 
In some cases, yes, it is a targeted buyout. That's what people think of immediately, I think, when they see these kind of spikes. And that can happen. That's when maybe one person or a small group of people decide to choose one card and buy as many copies as they can. Then they attempt to flip it either short term or long term. However, there's other reasons that you could see a reserve list card spike. Recently, there's been a lot of preemptive buys going on in the secondary market. What that means is players see these other cards spiking in price either because they naturally dry up or because they're targeted for buyouts, and they want to buy certain cards before that happens to them. So they'll pick out some cheaper reserve list cards, and they'll just buy maybe a copy or two, but enough people start to do that, it doesn't take a long time for the market to start to run out of copies, especially if you're just looking at the online market. And in other cases, there is true demand on a card. Maybe a new card comes out, say a Keldheim card that's got people thinking about building new commander builds, and all of a sudden a card that wasn't desirable before becomes a lot more desirable. In those cases, you might see something dry up naturally in the marketplace. So with all that being said, we have a lot of cards to talk about, so let's get into it. Prismatic Lace. This is actually seeing increased commander play in Orvar, the all-form builds. It goes up 502 to 597, so here's an example of a card that is moving because of a Keltime card. Shallow Grave. This has seen some increased play recently in commander in Obeka Brute Chronologist builds. It goes up 506 to 4997. Femoref Enchantress, this is good in enchantment heavy builds in Commander. It goes up 512 to $15. Hatred, this does see some Commander play in Lisa, Shroud of Dusk, and more. It goes up 522 this week to 4146. Recycle, this goes up 550 this week to 1095. Thoughtlash, this did see increased Commander play when Thassa's Oracle came out. Also, though, this is good in Zedra the Great Hearted builds. It goes up 575 this week to 2477. Bosium Strip up 587 to 1421. Maybe this could be decent in some Orvar, the all form commander decks. Opalescence up 589 to 2999 this week. This has seen some increased play in Gen Arcanum Weaver builds recently in Commander. Same with this card, Replenish. It goes up 598 this week to 10425. Who thought we'd be going to Fallen Empires today? This is Conchhorn going up 624 to 899. This might be okay in a Commander, a Sika, God of the Tree, slash the Prismatic Bridge build, I suppose. Righteous War goes up 642 to 1180 this week. Kyrian Druid. Now this is an elf, and like I said earlier in the video, Keltime is definitely supporting that tribe. There's even a Keltime Commander deck called Elven Empire. But most likely the main reason this is moving is because of its reserve list status. It goes up 644 this week to 999. Pygmy Hippo. This goes up 647 this week to 949. Shimmer up 663 to 1199. Seeds of Innocence. This does see a little commander play and might be good in a deck based around a new Keldheim card. Saral Pharrell Meter. This goes up 683 this week to 1822. Here's another card that might be good in those Commander Sika God of the Tree slash Prismatic Bridge builds. This is Saldevi Excavations. It goes up 719 this week to 1999. Lotus Vale, been a while since we've seen this one. It goes up 721 to 3907. Bazaar of Wonders, maybe not the best commander card considering the cost and the ability here, but it is kind of interesting. It goes up 754 to 997. City of Solitude, now this has seen increased commander play in your lack of Scorch Thrash builds. This goes up 759 this week to 3206. Next we have Tithe, very good commander card actually in a lot of different builds. It goes up 789 to 6250. Selenia Dark Angel. This actually does see a little commander play as a commander, and it can show up in Lisa Shroud of Dusk builds too at times. It goes up 811 to $15. Sarcomancy. I suppose there is a new legendary zombie lord in Keltime, Narfi Betrayer King. However, again, I think this is really moving because of its status on the reserve list. It goes up 840 this week to 1585. Memory Jar from Urza's Legacy goes up 844 this week to 107.99. This is in a lot of early commander deck lists based around two new popular legendary creatures from Keltime. You can find this in both Bergy God of Storytelling and Turgrid God of Fright builds right now. Morphling, this is good in a number of different commander builds, including Experimental Crash. This goes up 846 to $20.99. Three Wishes, there are a few cards from Keltime that encourage you to play cards from other places other than your hand. This actually could be a decent upgrade to the Keltime commander deck Phantom Premonition. It goes up 872 to 1371. Spoils of Evil is next. It goes up 873 this week to 1275. Anvil of Bogarden. This actually got popular back when Tiny Bones Trinket Thief came out not too long ago. You'll find that in those builds and others in Commander. 
but now this is seeing play in Turgrid God of Fright decks too. This goes up 904 this week to 4998. Meditate up 913 to 1733. I don't mean to alarm you, but Tainted Pact is not on the reserve list. Actually, the first card in this section that is not on the reserve list. It goes up 934 this week to 8777. And this is another card that did get a boost in Commander when Thassa's Oracle came out. Two in a row. Can we get three? This is Jester's Cap, the original copy from Ice Age. It goes up 935 to $20. Sees a little commander play here or there, but really the Ice Age copy is drying up online right now. Oh well, we were not able to discover three in a row, but what we did discover was Undiscovered Paradise. This goes up 962 to $36. This does show up in some of the land-centric builds in Commander, like Omnith Locus of Creation and more. Carnival of Souls, this jumps up 991 this week to 2349. Skeleton Ship up 999 to 1879. This could be good with Proliferate, I suppose, and occasionally it does see Commander play. Dream Halls continues to climb up 1017 this week to 4749. Goblin Wizard. Now you can find this in Goblin centric Commander decks like Cranko Mob Boss, for example. Also remember Strixhaven is the next standard set to come out, and there will be a focus on Wizards there. This goes up 1033 to 9495. Winding Canyons jumps up 1048 this week to 4204. Unfulfilled Desires up 1073 to 1499. Abeyance up 1129 to 2657. Baron Master Wizard, another wizard, imagine that. Maybe some people are thinking about Strixhaven. This goes up 1145 to 4999. And this does currently see some commander play. Great Whale, this is seeing increased commander play in Orvar, the all form builds. It goes up 1147 to 2699. Thawing Glaciers, this has seen increased commander play recently in Arkelos Lagoon Mystic builds. It goes up 1157 to 3874. And another wizard here, this is Urtai Wizard Adept, it goes up 1174 to $30. Halls of Mist goes up 1181 to 1447. Land Tax, the copy from the list goes up 1302 to 5750. There's our third card that's not on the reserve list, it finally showed up. So this is a highly played commander card, as you know, it's in a lot of different builds. Also, if you watch the Command Zone this week, they did an episode which was a gameplay episode, and one of the decks did run this card, which could have brought attention to it. Gus the Scepter, up $13.78 this week to $18. This is good in aggressive low casting cost commander builds. It also is a good way to protect against discard strategies, and you do see those many times in competitive commander. Now, with Turgrid got a fright around, you might see those a lot more in casual commander environments as well. And if you are the player that wants to play Turgrid, this might not be a bad inclusion because a lot of those discard effects are reciprocal. Scorched Ruins, this goes up 1422 to 5282 this week. Good in Commander Kozilek, the Great Distortion builds, and more. Volrath Shapeshifter, up 1461 to $29. This does see some Commander play. I always thought this card was a little undervalued. I used to play with it a lot, and it was sometimes surprisingly powerful. Curse Scroll, another blast from the past. It goes up 1479 to 2725. Here's the Silver Lord that is on the reserve list. Silver Queen goes up $15.13 to $250 this week. Like I mentioned earlier, Sliver decks are always going to be popular in Commander, and the Shapeshifters in Kel Time with the Changeling ability could be pushing this a little bit too. Keldoran Outpost, this goes up $16.42 this week to $31.56. Hall of Gemstone, this can be found now in some Vorinclex Monstrous Raider builds in Commander, also in other places too. It goes up $16.48 to $35.61. Temporal Aperture up sixteen sixty to twenty four ninety nine. Seems like it could be a decent card in Commander. I do like having shuffle effects in general. If you're still counting at home, here's the fourth card in the section that is not on the reserve list. It's Archfiend of Despair. It goes up seventeen seventeen to fifty seven forty five. Good amount of Commander play in a lot of builds, including Kali of the Vast, Phyrexian Purge. This goes up eighteen forty six to twenty four forty nine. Martin Stromgald. This goes up eighteen eighty to twenty five oh six. Now, this shows up a lot of times in some aggressive commander builds like Zodahedron Grinder. However, the main reason this is moving this week is this is another card that shows up in that Command Zone episode I mentioned earlier, and this card does some work. Mana Flare, yay, not on the reserve list. It goes up 1955 to 3494. This is the one from Revised, and it has seen increased commander play in your lock of Scorched Thrash builds. Earthcraft, this goes up $20 to $199.99. This plays really well with Squirrel Nest, and there's a reason I'm mentioning that. There are more squirrel decks out there in Commander right now, for a couple of reasons. 
One, we got a Keltime legendary squirrel called Toski Bearer of Secrets. And two, they recently released a secret layer called We Hope You Like Squirrels. Pendril miss. This goes up 2261 to 3950. Humility jumps up 2511 to 6999. Treachery, another card that has seen increased commander play in Orvar the All Form builds. This goes up 2549 to 10350. Lifeline, this jumps up 2798 this week to 5097. Volrath Stronghold, fairly popular commander card in a lot of different builds. It goes up 5525 this week to 148. Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage. Now, this is going up 5895 to 13114. However, honestly, I couldn't find any high grade copies selling for higher than 100 currently. Metalworker, great in artifact heavy commander builds. It goes up 6054 this week to 22775. Survival of the Fittest from Exodus, another card that's good in a lot of different commander builds. It goes up 6220 to 274.99. Mind over matter. This has seen some increased commander play in Quain itinerant meddler builds recently. This goes up 7506 to 12499 though this week. Palancron, another card that has seen increased commander play in Orvar the All Form builds recently. In general though, this is a good commander card, good combo enabler. When it comes to the price, however, it does look like maybe there's a little market manipulation going on. In theory, it's going up 9610 to 150. In reality, I haven't seen high grade copies selling for more than 115. Sarah Sanctum is next. This is good in enchantment heavy builds in the format. It goes up 17114 to 44995. That's going to bring us to the premium spotlight. Now, if you've been watching premium card prices, there's been a lot of spikes. Some of them have been relatively legitimate, others have been due to market manipulation. Now, when you watch these videos every week, I always give my disclaimer. I don't like to spend a lot of time on rare promos or foils because if a card doesn't sell enough in a given week, and most of the time these cards don't sell all that much because they're rare, then you don't necessarily get good market data, and sometimes the data can be manipulated. But I like to pick a few cards every week that kind of feel like they're moving mostly naturally with the market, that tell a story as to what's going on. I went with three different ones this week. First, we have Yawgmoth's Bargain, the foil copy from Urza's Destiny. It's going up 106 to 279.99. However, this is another one that feels like it is being targeted for a little manipulation. I have not seen high grade copies sell for more than 130. Here's another one that feels like it's being manipulated a little bit. This is Mox Diamond, but this is the foil copy that you'll find in From the Vault Relics. It goes up 134.99 this week to 749.99, or does it? In reality, I looked really hard to see if any of these have been selling for that price. High grade copies seem to be going for around 600. Now this last one is Survival of the Fittest. This is the Judge promo, which you're going to find, of course, only in foil. It goes up 262.40 to 1,235.58. And for this card, I have seen super high grade copies selling for around this price point, sometimes even a little more. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Market Watch. Like I said at the top of the show, though, just be careful if you're buying cards. So many cards are going up in price. We only covered a fraction of what's happening. Honestly, there's just so much going on. If you do want to buy something, just do your homework. Be really, really careful that you don't get pulled into a bad deal. And until next time, hey, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.